Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. My name is James Taylor and today we are celebrating having 100 subscribers to the channel so thank you very much everyone who has subscribed so far. Uh, I didn't think I'd get this far this quickly. Um, I think it's really good and I hope we do lots more fun stuff on the channel. Uh, actually we're actually on 102 which means I'm going to have to change this big screen thing here. There's a lot of schools here that are beginning to overlap because um, I only tested up to like 57 or something. So, yep, we're going to rebuild that. Um, however, it is traditional-ish when you have a channel you hit a milestone like 100 subscribers, you do something cool and funky. Usually this is like a face reveal. Um, and you know what you're thinking, they're going, oh, we know what you look like, you, you, you look like this. Well, uh, the reality is this is not my face. My face actually, and you know, this is really state-of-the-art latex, you know, it, it, Mission Impossible stuff going on here. But what I can actually do is I can actually sort of rip my face off like this. Uh, and... Yes, see, it works. Almost reality-wise, we now have um, the robot face, the true face of me, the robot face going on here. Um, and this is live. I haven't done this in post. You can see my face just trace. I'm only doing it, I'm doing it quite slowly because uh, I've got a lot of things wrong with my laptop right now. Um, what's quite interesting is it finds the schools up here in the background actually as, as schools, so that's quite amusing. Um, but instead of just doing this, I thought I'd show how we do it, how we do face capture really nice and easily, um, and sort of show it off a little bit. So... What we're going to do first of all is show it off in Jupiter, how to do face capture in Jupiter. I'm not going to show off the details about how face capture actually works or OpenCV, if you use OpenCV library. I'm not going to go into the details about how it does it, I'm just going to do the bare minimum to actually get it working. Because a lot of times you just want to do cool stuff saying, is there a face, where is the face? Not really get into the details of how it works it all out. You just want to use the library, not just you know understand all the science behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip over to this straight away. And I'm also going to show how I then manipulate that and put it on top of OBS real time. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, uh, basically import uh, CV2, which I should have, and that should import nicely. Can take a little bit of time the first time. I'm also going to, just so you know, import matplotlib uh, for plotting. Um, this is just because I want to output the, the images in a moment, and, and you'll sort of see what, what it is. The next thing is you need a cascade, and the cascade basically defines I'm on the wrong window. How embarrassing. How embarrassing is that? Um, uh, two. There we go. And you probably all saw that I already had my sample code already written, which is what I like to do. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit embarrassing. To go. Maybe I prepped this in advance. Uh, so basically, you want, in the TV matplotlib, nice and easy. Next thing you want to do is you want to have a face cascade, okay? So, um, you might have more than one cascade, uh, but this is what we'll do. So, cascade classifier, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to grab one. So, there's a default one, which is called har, har cascade, like this, and it comes in an XML file. Just grab the XML file, save it to your local system. As long as this file's in the same place as that, should be fine. Um, the next line of code, we actually want to initialize the video camera. Now, video capture. For me, I'm going to use a 2 because number 0 is a special one. Number 1 is, is the webcam on my MacBook. Number 2 is the webcam up here. Now, what's interesting is the moment you've done this, when you've actually imported CV2, it binds. If you're using Jupyter, that actually binds when the kernel, when you ran this in the kernel. So even if you run this again, if you unplug or have your webcam unplugged, you run it and there is no webcam, you plug your webcam in and run it, it won't find it. You have to restart the kernel of Jupyter. If you're running in a script, it won't matter. It will just find it next time the script runs. Okay. So I've got my capture device. The other thing I'm going to put in now, because I'm going to, I'm going to use it, is you have to be sure to release the capture device at the end of it. So make sure you put that at the bottom and make sure you call it. If you don't, you can get some weird problems because it's in the of the C library. Releasing the capture devices solves you headaches later on. So if you're doing more complicated things, you've got like exceptions being thrown, make sure you catch the exception and release your capture device uh, is one hint. Um, basically now it gets a bit um, easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually grab a frame from the capture. It's a video capture device, we want one frame. So ret uh, frame equals cap.read. Now the ret here is true or false. Okay, so if I print ret off, it's false, um, which means, I believe that means it worked. Uh, just for fun, I believe that means it worked. We don't actually look at it, don't care. Uh, if I look at frame, 
Um, it, it, it is a thing. Right. For um, our code to work, what we want to do is for the cascade to work, we actually just want a black and white image. It's easier for the cascade to detect things in black and white. So what we're going to do is go convert it to black and white. So cv2 dot cvt color uh, frame. Get the frame cv2 dot color bgr2 gray. Now you, there's a lot of magic things going on here. A lot of magic variables. Uh, cvt color assertion failed. Source is empty. So let me just run that again. Oh, uh, um, I, I released the camera, didn't I? I released the camera, I was demoing it. So that's now run, my camera's still there. So I've now got a grey thing. If I actually had another one here and just look at the ret value, it'll be true. Look at frame, it'll be a lot of data. And and it, be, at this point, we really, CV is all, isn't all is about pictures. So don't expect to use OpenCV to do video streaming. It's about manipulating and identifying objects. It's about computer vision at the end of the day. And computers treat each one of these things as those are colours. And weirdly, they treat them as blue, green, red, not red, green, blue. And that's because of, historically, that's what digital cameras used to do. And therefore, that's why they do it. But actually, these days, most digital cameras do RGB. Um, just for fun. Now, we want to find the faces. And this is the magic line. Faces, which will be an array of faces. Okay. Uh, Cascade.detect multiscale. Okay. Now, we want to use the grey to detect it, a scale factor of 1.1. Again, don't worry about what these are, min, size, 30, 30. Now this lets you basically all find things which it thinks are faces, there might be pictures in photo frames or there might just be things which it detects statistically are faces and they're not. Um, so this helps us iron some out, so we might want to bump that up a bit. And we also want to use flags equals cv2.cascade scale image. Okay. And what it's going to do is it's basically going to loop over all the pixels in the image and find things that look like faces. Okay. So we run that. And it immediately goes wrong because you can't do that. You have to have a function there. Right. And what it does is it will give us an array of faces. So here is uh, no faces found. Wonderful. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to look at the camera whilst I run it. And it comes back with faces. There you go, some faces. And these are basically top left coordinate and then a width and height. That's what that is. Um, so what we can then do is we can loop over those. So 4x, y, uh, width and height in faces. We can then do cv2.rectangle. This is the basic one. I've drawn draw on the frame. I want to draw it at the x, y coordinate, and I want it to be for the x plus 2 the x. Um, so in this language, in in CB2, we're actually drawing them across and down. Um, we don't do width and height. We actually go from this point to this point, so I'm actually drawing a, a box. Uh, I'm giving the top left and the bottom right coordinates. And we also want it to be a colour, so I don't know, 0, 0, 5, 5. Make it nice and blue. Uh, width of 2, right? That's good. Draw all those on there. Now, the annoying thing is to actually show those is a bit of a pain. Um, you you would save the image or whatever. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use matplotlib at this point, in show frame, and then plot dot show like that. Uh, let's go think about it, but there it is. You can see there's a blue box there. That wasn't a very good one, was it? Let's do, let's do green box. It's also found some, some images down there. Now, you'll also notice here that it's, it, it's a weird colour. I do find OpenCV... Uh, it's supposed to be grey scaled already, but there's some there's some weird things going on with the frame. Actually, no, this is the frame, not grey. So, if I did grey, is it called grey with an A or grey with an E? There you go. That that was the the black and white version. It actually, did the face capturing on, um, <laughs> not really black and white, but that the actual image under hood. So it is working as intended. It is all awesome. So what we've now done is we've now got a thing which can find a face. What you would do if you're doing this properly is actually take the faces and look at the next frame and look at the faces again, and then you'd iron out what went faces. So you'd basically say, oh, this one isn't moving, or you'd, or you'd average out the movement, or you begin to get better. So sometimes it won't detect a face, and the next frame it will. If I glance to the side just enough, it won't detect a frame. Point is, we have face capturing. It tells where the face is. It tells us how big the face is, which is important, because sometimes I get really close up to the camera like this, and sometimes I, I just sit back. Okay, so it detects the face, it detects the size and location.
we will be using this in an upcoming project. This is just for fun. So I now have the, the code to actually do this. We're going to actually now make it work as, a, as an overlay for OBS. <clears throat> so the way we've been doing overlays in other videos is we've been doing a Pi game thing. So over here, uh, I have the Pi game set up. So we're going to import Pi game. We're going to do uh, from Pi game in, uh, dot time import clock because we want a clock. Uh, alive equals true, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do pi game dot init clock equals uh, clock like that. Um, now I like to have my one nine twenty. I don't need it to be a massive picture because that's just going to take up more processing powers. I don't know why I copied that because one o eighty. But I want it to be the same resolution, the same ratio as my camera, which is, is HD camera, so let's put that in. Um, what we want to do is initialize the screen. So screen equals pi game dot display dot set mode um, uh, width height. That's double brackets there because it takes uh, um, a, a width and a height as a single argument. Display equals two. So we want it to appear on this screen here and we'll all be happy. Um, and then the next line is going to be um, uh, the next line is going to be actually going into the main loop. So while alive, if um, what we want to do is make sure we can quit Pi game. It's always very important, and I always use this little code here, which I basically copy uh, in. And all this is going to say is look at all the things in the event queue. If any of them are the quit function, set alive to being false. And I'm just going to do a print. Uh, starting main game loop here <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is basically do if alive if alive so if it is still alive screen dot fill not 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 so it's inside the bracket so it takes a single color and that's a, that's a color and then pi game dot display display dot flip flip the display clock dot tick 15 15 milliseconds okay Python run me 3.py. <clears throat> that seemed to work. It's all running very nicely. Nothing crashes. That means all our libraries are installed. The Pi game was running. Uh, that very boring. Let me make this window a little bit smaller so you can actually see me running it. Okay. Oh, that. Don't want to care about my Python interpreter. Let me make this a little bit bigger as well. There we go. Right, so what we're going to do now is load my skull in. So in my folder, I have that XML file I mentioned. I also have a school image equals pi game dot image dot load skull dot png. And you could use like the troll face, whatever, dot convert alpha, because uh, I want it to be an alpha image. Uh, so, so it will. Um, but uh, it's black in the middle, but it has uh, transparency on the outside. That's why I use a PNG. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to blit it uh, down here. We're just going to blit it in. So uh, screen dot blit uh, skull 100, 100. Just slam it in the middle. See if that works. Skull in the middle of the screen. Perfect. Okay, so we've basically got everything we want to do. Now, actually, we're going to want to green screen this. So I'm going to set that to 255. To give me a nice green screen and there we have a green screen effect with with the skull in the middle of it exactly what the doctor ordered um <laughs> we'll deal with scaling this in a moment and i'll show you how i scale it so it works correctly next thing we're going to do is we're going to backport the code from the jupiter into this so what we're going to do at the top or back to the top is we're now going to import uh, cv uh, don't worry about trying to write this down as I go, CB2, because I'm going to put it into a gist and dump it onto GitHub, and then it'll, the link will be down below in the description. So if you really want a, your own copy of this, it'll be done. Uh, your biggest problem will probably be installing Pygame, uh, not Pygame, oh, yeah, Pygame maybe, uh, OpenCV. It does require a couple of dependencies. I have it installed already. It's quite a big download. It's not just Python's OpenCV dash Python. It is actually the OpenCV C components as well. So it is worth um, looking up how to install that. So, uh, from our other place, what we're going to do is grab these. Again, I could use arguments, so I could actually do uh, command line arguments, so which webcam I want to pick up, but I know it's always going to be number two. So, 
my classifier, my video capture device, grab those, paste those in. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do down here is uh, is cap dot release. Uh, cap dot release. Yeah. So that when I quit, the video capture has been released. Won't cause me any problems the next time with the thing. Uh, what we're going to do is really just copy in the lines of code one by one. So we're going to basically, before the blit, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to read a frame um, here. That will once every 15 milliseconds because, oh, no, uh, yeah, 50 milliseconds. Uh, it's 15 frames, 15 frames a second, so more than 15 milliseconds, actually. Um, we're going to do capture the frame there. We're going to pull the grey scale out. Bear in mind this may take longer than the time we've got in, which is why we use the clock dot tick. We're then going to do the exact the same faces loop here. There you go. <clears throat> now, I want to know the size of the screen, okay? The size, so I want to get the cam width and the cam height. And that's, did I get my capture? Yeah, my video capture top. That gets me the cam width and the cam height. Now, one of the things I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to resize that school to the same size as my video image that I'm actually doing because I'm doing mine at 1920 by 2 which may not be the same resolution that the video capture was running at. So what we're going to do is we're going to do vert ratio equals the height over the cam height and the horizontal pore ratio equals the width divided by the cam width. Um, horizontal ratio is important. Um, what we're now going to do is say 4x, y, w, and h in faces. We're basically going to work out what the new ratio is. So the new width is equal to the int of the width w times the or ratio. I don't know why I say ratio though, because obviously I know it's horizontal ratio, but I, I don't know why I say that. I can hear my mum screaming at the TV set going, pronounce it properly. Height times the vert ratio. Now you have to turn it to an int. If you don't do that, this is going to be a fraction. This is going to be a, a it's actually going to be a float. So it's not going to be a fraction, it's going to be a float. They are technically different things. Um, fractions are really cool. We should do a video on fractions. I lose all my subscribers in that one go. So the new x um, turns it into, otherwise the thing will complain that you passed it a float and not an int. Because it, 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 the, the underlying library is C and really does not like you passing it dodgy things. Like really, really do not pass it. It won't go, oh, I know this is a number and just convert it on the fly. It'll go, no, you pass me a float, I shall die. Um, so uh, equals int. And this is going to be the x times the horizontal or ratio. And then the new y of y time or ratio. As long as I haven't misspelled anything, it should be good. Now, we're not going to do the CV rectangle this time because we're not going to actually put the video into the frame. I'm just going to put the skull onto the frame and then I'm going to overlay the skull on the video, which is down here running real time. So, to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're first of all going to transform. So, what I need to do before we do is I need a new surface. So new surface, as opposed to the old surface, never course a new, but it's a very bad idea. Uh, pi game dot surface, and I want it to be the end size. Uh, sorry, uh, n width, n height. There we go. So the end size. Uh, and it's going to be a pi gain. You have to pass in any flags you want. So um, one of the flags that I want to pass in here is source alpha, which gives it four numbers per, per pixel. I have an alpha channel. Very important, otherwise I'll just mask out the entire picture. Um, with that in mind, what we can now do is we can now do um, uh, pi... Because I've not got a new surface. Pi gain dot transform. Uh, dot scale the skull to the new size on the new surface. I like how I put 
and underscores everywhere apart from there. So I'm just going to put underscores in there as well. So it's new size to the new surface. And then I've got this screen dot lit, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to transform the new surface onto it. Now this is really bad that I'm initializing all these little surfaces, but it will be worth it. Let, don't you worry. Um, after that, I've blitzed it on, I've done the flips, it's going to put lots of faces on, and I'm going to run that as a loop. So, what we should have here is one face appearing because I didn't hit save. So, I'm going to hit save and do that again. Okay, so my face is obviously uh, not quite right as I move around. It is getting bigger because I put 100 100 here, and that should be new x and new y. Always across and down, just like we like to see. I'm going to close that and run it again. Here we go. So we should now have a picture here, which uh, I didn't hit save. I, I only do that when I'm recording. I, I, I have it in quite a few of my videos where I do a thing, then don't hit save. So there we go, there's little faces. There's my face. As I move over here, the block moves, disappears a bit because I'm not looking at the camera. Look at the camera over here. And if I move over here, and just for the sizing, check the sizing does work, someone's messaging me, it gets big or it gets really small. Okay, so that works really nicely. I'm just going to leave that running over here. Now, as I say, so if I turn my head to look at the screen, it stops working, I turn my head back, it picks it up again. That's just a limitation of the open source libraries. There are other libraries, lots of other things. Oh, right then, this is my OBS setup. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to move that over there and it's going to work in the background. Is I'm going to add a new source which is going to be a window capture it's already picked up the window capture I want to do it now I should have made the thing without a boundary but you just got to live with that for the moment okay, add the source so we've got a window capture it's right on the top there it's already worked out what I'm going to do with it but I'm going to show you that anyway go to filters and when you come into filters it will actually look like this uh, there'll be no filters and you have all these options you don't want to click those you want to click this little plus sign so you click the plus sign and then you want to change the filter type to being color key, which you might have to scroll down for, hit done. And then it will say, well, what color do you want to do it on? And you want it to be on green, because I picked green. We want the similarity. It's very picky about its similarity. So there we go. You see, it all goes to black, which is what we want. If I look behind, though, it's showing it's best transparent, though. So the black is now transparent. Pesty is 100% smoothness. It just affects how it detects those things. Hit done. And now all I have to do now is line that up there with my original input not resizing it again just line it up there and as you see because i'm using a small one i could probably have got away with a much smaller um there we go so what i'm seeing on my screen here is this big green thing as you can see there and then as i move my head it is quite slow because i put it at 15 frames the ticks at 15 and it, it takes time to run the motion the, the the face detection anyway but you are seeing it is actually doing face detection and it is tracking my face on the little thing so there's some cool things you can do here, like you could do it when you press a button or wait, does a thing, it actually does like a, a big smiley emoticon or something, I don't know. Uh, it, there's lots of scope that you could use this, so every time you get a kill or every time you die in game, it comes up like like a, a death face or a troll face or something automatically for five seconds or something. You could do some cool stuff with this if you really wanted to. Um, that's it, That that is that is all I wanted to show you, was this face to reveal of me as my robot school face. Um, it is, it is a little bit slow. It also may be a little bit small. Maybe I could play with the resizing. Probably speed it up a bit. Had a more powerful computer. Maybe I would have run it a bit faster or something. Um, but yeah, um, that's that's basically it for today. So thank you very much um, for subscribing. If this is the first time you've seen the channel, again, please hit subscribe. Please hit like. Please, please put a comment down below. It really helps feed the algorithms. Um, and no, it's a it's a, been an absolute pleasure to to enjoy writing some code because I um, I'm an engineer professionally and I don't get to write code at work anymore. Uh, I've sort of moved beyond that. I do architecture. I do a lot of talking about code, but I don't write code anymore. So it's been a lot of fun being able to be creative and just have fun with computers rather than seeing them as the source of all evil that blights my day. Um, anyways. That's all I've got time for. So if you did like this, please hit like and please hit subscribe. And hopefully we shall see you in the next episode. Thank you very much.